Hello, and welcome to another installment of the Pug's Thoughts in the Doghouse. I'm Pug, and here's what I'm thinking. This is part two of thoughts from Seattle Seahawks fans. Once again, I got a lot of comments from, uh, from Seahawks fans, and uh, so I decided to address them in a couple of videos. So this is part two uh, with the comments that we haven't got to yet uh, from last week. So uh, let's start off with another comment from Mentally Juiced, his other comment. He uh, writes, he or she writes, meant, uh, once again, don't know if you're a he or a she, uh, and if, you, if I call you a he and you're not a he or a she, or if I call you a she and you're a he, I am sorry, but that's the problem with usernames. I, I do know of a couple of people who are, I don't know what sex they are, but uh, it's just because of usernames. Just want to make sure I'm politically correct with that. Anyway, um, Mentally Juice writes, Mike Sando said that after today's minicamp, it is very clear that the Seahawks need a left tackle. I'm excited to hear that Alex Gibbs is more aggressively vocal than past line coaches in Seattle. I ha uh, He had a lot of barking to do while players tried to meet his standards in a new scheme. I can't wait for the draft. I really hope we get Marshall without giving up a first rounder. Go Seahawks. Well, you don't have to worry about uh, giving up a first rounder for Brandon Marshall because he's now unavailable, as I'm sure you know. Uh, so there's, uh, there's uh, the good side of not getting Brandon Marshall. Didn't have to get rid of a draft pick. Um, for those of you who do not know, uh, who are watching this, Alex Gibbs is our new offensive line coach, and I think it is nice, I think too, it is nice that you have a coach barking at the players, unlike the coaching staff last year. And I'm also super pumped we don't have Greg Knapp anymore. I mean, maybe Jeremy Bates will call a better game, we'll see, but I'm very happy that Greg Knapp is not, not with the Seahawks anymore. All right, next up is Baby Ralph 12 He writes, uh, Pug, I too am a Huskies fan. Go Locker. Anyways, back to the Seahawks. The reason why I said Barry is because I've watched our games over and over, and it always seems to me that our safeties were always beat in coverage. But I also did notice that Jordan Babs was getting better um, and wouldn't bite on the play action as much. Uh, so if you insert Barry, it would be like having another cornerback on the field without having to take away uh, uh, take away any of our linebackers. But to correct you, Java Best is a running back out of Cal, not a quarterback. So do you think Matt will be signed for another year or two if he has a good start this year? Plus, what about moving our D from a 4-3 to a 3-4 and having Hawthorne in the mix? Um, first off, thanks again for the video response, Baby Ralph 12. Uh, that was really nice of you. Um, I did watch it. And now you stated you're a Huskies fan and you gave out a shot to Jake Locker. I'm not the biggest Jake Locker fan. No. Uh, however, if he does well this year, I will eat the crow that I keep expecting to eat uh, every year Locker's been playing. Um, and, you know, because I'm hoping he does well because he's had a, a poor year, an okay year, and a good year. It's now time to have a great year. You know, it would be, I mean, I understand that, you know, he's got, you know, he's got to deal with the line, the Seahawks, uh, not the Seahawks, the Huskies were dealing with problems with their coach and, you know, how, you know, an 0-12 season, I understand that. But honestly, he really hasn't impressed me overall. But hopefully he'll impress me next year and I'll finally eat the crow and I'll finally be able to eat my words. I want to eat my words because it would be nice to see the Huskies go to a bowl game, whether it's the Rose Bowl or the where the heck is this game being played and who is sponsoring it, .com Bowl. You know, I, it, it would be nice to see Locker do well. But as of right now, not a really big Jake Locker fan. Anyway, uh, the more I hear about Eric Berry, the more I like the pick, even though he's not a lineman. Um, as far as going to a 3-4 defense, that's been talked about uh, among Seahawks fans for a while, uh, ever since David Hawthorne uh, burst on the scene. I think that's a good possibility now with Pete Carroll as the head coach. I didn't see that happening with Jim Mora because Mora was really stubborn. I would be fine with having Hawthorne to Tupu Curry and maybe Berry in our defense. Um, it could change things up a little bit, so I can see that it, it could be beneficial. Um, and I can see Matt Hasselbeck potentially signing if he does well. Uh, Seattle sports teams have a tendency to sign their stars as long as they can. I mean, for example, look at Ken Griffey Jr. A lot of sports analysts say, uh, a lot of sports analysts on ESPN and also on ESPN Seattle say Griffey would be out of baseball if he wasn't playing with the Mariners. So I can see Hasselbeck signing uh, if he does well. And, uh, and signing a little longer. Yeah, it's just something that Seattle teams do. And then finally, yes, I stand corrected. Java Best is a running back, not a quarterback. And I still have a concern about his 
injury though because um, that was one of the scariest injuries I've ever seen in, in my life. Um, my question is, can best take uh, those types of hits in, uh, in the NFL? Um, that's my number one concern. So that's my response to you, uh, baby Ralph 12. Feel free to comment again. Next up is the Kit Harvey. Good to hear from you again, my Australian uh, uh, viewer. So anyway, uh, the Kit Harvey writes, I'm definitely with you on Forsett. He deserves another shot this year. He was on fire in a few games last year. What are your thoughts about losing Nate Burleson to a five-year deal at the Lions? Uh, for me, he was easily in our top two receivers, so it is a pity to have lost him. But then again, it sounds like the two Williams had a good million camp. Well, the kid Harvey, my first reaction was, how many former Seattle Seahawks need to go to the Detroit Lions? I mean, because look at it. I mean, they got Maurice Morris, they got Julian Peterson, and now they got Nate Burleson. I mean, it's like a reunion. I mean, well, actually, there's another team that's collecting former Seattle Seahawks, and that is the, uh, they are the Philadelphia Eagles. They have Leonard Weaver, who I really wish we still had. Oh, after watching him have his Pro Bowl last year, I really wish we had Leonard Weaver. Um, and then the other one is uh, Daryl Tapp. Um, so it's not just the Lions. Um, I'm not too concerned about losing Nate Burleson. Uh, he is easily replaceable. Um, with him gone, we can use Dion Butler. And since you're from Australia, um, I don't know if you know this, but Dion Butler has a similar built and a similar style of play like former Seattle Seahawk wide receiver Bobby Ingram, um, which is which is good. So you can we can use him. Also, the wide receiver core in the draft and also in the free agent market is really deep. So, um, and as you mentioned, we now have the Williams uh, players to work with too. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned about uh, Nate Burleson uh, uh, leaving. And then the last comment of the week came from a user, uh, person who goes by the username Lenny Berry. It has been removed, but I did get it um, with the email, so I'm going to respond to it anyway. Uh, Lenny Berry says, I have no doubt that Pete Carroll and John Snyder know exactly what, they're do what they are doing. Both men have stated that the Seahawks are rebuilding and have made it clear that it's, that it's going to take a couple of years to get this team completely back on track. Matt Hasselbeck is actually in a good position this year because he has two talented quarterbacks to work with. Charlie Whitehurst and Mike Teal are both underrated. I pick either one over Tebow, Clawson, or Bradford any day. So Lenny Berry, thanks again for commenting. My first question to you is, where have you heard Pete Carroll and John Steiner say the Seahawks are rebuilding? Because I've been waiting to hear that. I haven't heard that. I have, you know, I have bashed the Seahawks for not doing it. I think that's hurt them. So if you could tell me where you've heard that, where you got that information, please let me know. I really would like to hear from it because I've, I've been waiting to hear that. And it would actually help the Seahawks saying that they are rebuilding. I've been saying why it would be beneficial. So let me know where you got that information, and I'll get off the Seahawks uh, about that. Um, and it's also a statement that you said you would rather have Charlie Whitehurst and Mike Teal over Tebow, Clawson, and Bradford. And, you know, that's okay. I personally would take a chance on Tebow, but I don't, I don't see that happening. I hope that Pete Carroll and John Steiner know what they're doing too because I don't care if we miss the playoffs next year. I just want to be competitive because unlike last year, it was really pointless when this team took the field late in the season. Um, so that's my response to you. So thanks again to everybody who commented and is responding to my videos. Keep it up. Um, I will get back to you. And uh, feel free to comment again wherever this video is on the Internet. And uh, that will finally do it for this week. Uh, a lot of videos this week here on the here on the Pugstots and Doghouse. And we will see you next week for another installment of uh, the Pugstots and the Doghouse. Go Seahawks.